So today we're talking about how to train your gut because it's a really important topic and I think it gets overlooked. We're going to run through five strategies which you can use to hopefully improve your nutrition and your performance in your upcoming races. If you're new here, then hey, I'm James and I talk about everything related to nutrition and triathlon. At the moment, we're talking about all things related to race nutrition and this is another video of the race nutrition series. If you haven't already, then press the subscribe button and the notification icon to get an alert every time when I release a new video on this. There's gonna be loads of different videos talking about different topics to help you train and race better over the next couple of weeks and months. Before we go into the actual strategies themselves, let's very quickly run through the current nutrition guidelines around endurance exercise. You'll see different figures available, but generally the recommendation is between 60 and 90 grams of carbohydrates per hour. But everyone is different, so some people can tolerate less and some people can tolerate way more, and they might even be able to tolerate in excess of 90 grams of carbs. We have to factor it in though that some people just won't be able to absorb as much and we want to minimize the risk of tummy upset or issues relating to just taking on too much food. However, theoretically more is better, especially as we go longer distance and it becomes more important. The more carbohydrates we have available from food, the more we can save our body's store of carbohydrates, which essentially means that we can work harder for longer. And it means that our body upregulates or increases the amount of carbohydrates it can burn and use. Again, meaning that you should be able to work harder because your body can provide you with the energy that you need. So we want to practice getting better at tolerating more and whether that's fluid for hydration, some sort of carbohydrate based supplement for energy, we want to get better. So these strategies are gonna focus on different parts of gut training. This might be things like gastric emptying, so how fast your tummy can empty, how much carbohydrate you can actually absorb, how much carbohydrate you can then deliver to your muscles, and getting your stomach used to trying to absorb carbohydrates while exercising, and trying to reduce the uncomfortable sensations. Now, straight up, these might not all work for you, but they're definitely worth trying, and I would perhaps pick one of them at a time and see how you get on. So onto strategy number one, which is to train directly after a meal. Now the aim here is to increase your exposure to unpleasant sensations in and around your stomach, but then to try and adapt and reduce them. Before you go, all right, and you stuff a load of pasta in and you head out and do some intervals, I wouldn't necessarily recommend that. You don't want to go crazy here and go super hard or super long because that's not really the point of it. Try it with a smaller meal and if that feels comfortable enough, you can increase it and see what you can tolerate. We know that as you work harder, the blood flow to organs like your intestines reduce. So if you go and try and do intervals, you're much more likely to get some stomach upset. So just think that the aim here is more to train your gut rather than to train your fitness itself. Now the second tip is to train with a high amount of carbs during exercise. Again, the idea here is to just increase your body's exposure to carbohydrates specifically during exercise and to get it more used to it and able to deal with them. We are thinking easier to digest carbohydrates here because that's what we want the focus to be on. And that might be your supplements like gels or drinks, or it might be things like bananas. These are great things to try during your long sessions. So if you know you've got a long swim, a long run or a long bike, try and make sure that you get some carbohydrates in there to get your body used to them. This is where you could also do some high intensity exercise, like intervals, sprints, anything like that, and use some of your sports specific carbohydrate supplements if you have them like gels or drinks. Again, it just helps to get your body used to using more carbohydrates and getting better at it. Tip number three is all about fluid and drinking a little bit more. Just like you push yourself slightly harder each week, maybe you run slightly longer, or you do an interval slightly harder than before, think of the same but with fluid. See if you're comfortable drinking a certain amount or volume of fluid, and the next time, try and increase it just a little bit. See how you feel, and if it's comfortable, try and push it up that little bit more. When you get to that point where you think this is uncomfortable, it may be that you can't go any further, but it may be that if you try that a couple more times, you'll actually find that sensation ease, and your body's adapted. 
Now I talked about this more in last week's video on hydration, and if you haven't watched that, then I've linked it at the top of the screen now. But it is really important to not just drink water when you race or when you train. We want to make sure that you have sodium in it, because actually just drinking water can be more of a detriment than not. So if you haven't already, I'd really recommend going and watching that, because that will give you some great advice on how to hydrate yourself and how to do it safely. Now the fourth tip is to just increase the amount of carbohydrates in your overall diet. If you're someone who generally eats a low carbohydrate diet, so maybe you specifically follow a low carb diet or you use a keto diet or similar, certainly coming into race season, I would really encourage you to increase the amount of carbohydrates you consume on a daily basis. By doing so, the aim is to get your body more used to having carbohydrates. And we know that generally, the more carbohydrates we have in the diet, the better our body is at absorbing them. In order to absorb the carbohydrates, we have transporters in our intestines. And the idea is to increase them by having more carbohydrates in your diet. Now, this was only done in animal studies, but it suggests that probably a similar mechanism would work for us, in that when you transition from a low to a higher carbohydrate-based diet, the amount of those transporters in our tummy does increase. So by increasing carbohydrates in your diet over a couple of weeks, you should be able to improve the amount you can absorb and therefore use when you race. Now, the fifth and final tip is to practice your race day nutrition, especially leading into a race. And by this, I mean practicing exactly your race day nutrition. So the same products, the same supplements, everything that you think that you're going to use on the day. And this then also includes the amount of fluids that you're going to try and take in as well. Get used to doing it, including how frequently you're going to eat during your race. So for example, if you're planning on using a gel every 20 minutes, practice that and make sure that you deal with it okay. If not, then you might need to change it up a bit until you get to that point where you're comfortable. And I have one final super important tip related to this, and that's to make sure that you also practice your race nutrition at your race pace and intensity. And that's because as we work harder, our ability to absorb food and absorb carbohydrates decreases. So if you practice your race day nutrition while you're on the bike and you're having a nice, easy, jolly old session, and you think, this is super easy, I'm not getting any sort of tummy upset, this is great. And then it's race day and you're racing at your race pace using your nutrition plan, which you've practiced, but you think this actually doesn't feel that comfortable and you develop tummy upset. That's probably because you haven't actually practiced at that same intensity and you can't actually absorb as much as you thought you could. So practice at your race pace and make sure that you're still comfortable. And if not, dial it back a bit you're going to be much better off just absorbing a good amount that you can do comfortably than trying to push it and stopping because of tummy upset. I did do a full video on race nutrition practice, which I've linked at the top of the screen now, and you can watch that for some more information if you'd like. Otherwise, that's the end of today's video. I hope you found it useful and I hope you enjoyed it. And I hope you're gonna go away and train your gut. Sounds a bit weird really, doesn't it? But anyway, I hope you do. If you haven't already, I'd really appreciate it if you gave the video a like and press subscribe to stay up to date with everything that I release and press the notification icon too. Next week's video is all about caffeine before a triathlon, whether it's actually worth it, how much to take and how to do it all properly. And I will catch you next time. See ya.